Yeah, you probably can get an idea of what I'm going to play with today. Maybe just a little bit of a hint. E. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. All right, so I have this nice little wooden turntable, Lazy Susan, whatever you want to call them nowadays. <laughs> um, and I've also got this stencil that I was using to see how to do alcohol inks and stencils at the same time, which proved to be real, rather challenging. And, um, and that was part of my alcohol ink basics videos, which, by the way, if you're interested in those, there's a playlist of alcohol ink basics. So check that out if you're new into alcohol, and I broke them down to different techniques. So this one, this here, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the background of some colors, and I'm still playing with um, some of these color shift colors, but I got a bunch of red tones out right now. And I still got this plate here with some other ones in it. But I'm going to create a nice background here. And then when that's dry, I'm going to do some stenciling with some acrylics with this guy. So the plan, as far as colors-wise, that I'm going to mess around with, it's still the color shift colors. Uh, this is the red flash and the orange flash. However, I've got a darker color here just to pop up a little bit of contrast. And I'm not even going to begin to pronounce that top one. No, I was here as, uh, as I tried to pronounce magenta. I got that one. We'll just say that. But it's a really, really pretty color. Uh, you can see it's got a nice little range of tones that you can do. By the way, th this is something I have done forever. Um, put colors on the top. It really makes it handy for when you're trying to um play with your colors and layouts like you know i want to work on this but what colors will work together you know i've even got it done with like my alcohol links all the tops have colors and it helps with the whole audition process so i've done it forever and so every time i open up a new bottle and i'm going to use it at that point like i poured these guys out and i would just dab it and put a little bit on the top I think, but I try to, if it's a small lid, I go ahead and cover the lid. And if I can, just brush it so there's a little bit of a fade so you can see if it's thin out to where it gets thicker, you can tell it's also a very transparent color too. So, yeah. A little hint there. See, I've even, I haven't done it completely with this one because it kind of put a label on there, but I did put some of it down because even the label, I mean, it's on a holographic label. You know, and the paint doesn't really look holographic, but it does shift a bit when you see it in real life. Now, it's not real super flashy like um, those chameleon pigments, but it, it's pretty cool, I have to admit. Okay. Now, these are acrylic paints, and I am planning on using resin after this, so I want to make sure that this completely dries. So, you know, 24 hours is good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole lot with the resin on top of it. Depends on how the stencil turns out. But, yeah. So we're going to go. I really like my background's kind of brushy, and that is exactly what I'm going to do today. The orange is almost like a kind of a milky orange. It looks pretty with this. I might bring in another, I don't know, I have to see. This might be enough and maybe I just bump up the contrast with the stencil. All right, just making sure I get my edges nice and neat. Now this is just straight out of the bottle. I haven't diluted it down the, uh, down this paint at all. Now, I know that's um, something you do commonly with uh, acrylic inks. Not necessarily dilute it down, but mix it with pouring mediums and such like that. So it does offer a thinner consistency. And I haven't done that with these. 
because uh, if I do that, I don't get brush strokes and I kind of want brush strokes. All right, this is probably gonna look hmm, very transparent through the camera. <laughs> oh gosh, sorry. All right, get this finished up and I'll start throwing down some colors that hopefully you will see through the camera. Because otherwise it's looking rather dull. Get that out. Didn't get it out. Come on, get off my brush. Okay, fine. I don't know what that is. So there. That almost feels like silicone. You know, the, uh, kind of like the stuff that they put on the, like the backs of gift cards so it'll stick to um, card stock when you buy them at the store. That's kind of really what it reminds me of. All right, so I'm getting close to having this fully covered and then I'm gonna bump in with a little bit of the um, magenta and that'll help bring up the contrast a bit and you'll see a lot more activity going on because right now I'm sure it's super exciting. Just kidding. Okay, here comes the Magina. They bring in a little color, a little bit. enough here. Okay, now I have some 24 karat gold on my other plate and I was debating whether or not to add it because it wouldn't be monotone, but I almost think that this needs a little bit of that. So I might be rethinking my colors on my dragon that go on top so that way it really pops out more because it's going to have to compete with this gold a little bit. So I just did a piece recently which might be released just before this one um, that had purple tones and this gold in there but I let the gold really be the showstopper and here I'm kind of brushing it in a little bit more than I did with the other one that helps that helped a lot okay and if I'm gonna do this oriental dragon gold is definitely a good thing that Some of these areas where you just see wood with this starting to dry, you can see a nice little shimmer. Let me bring you down. Okay, so this is what it's looking like from my point of view. So we get a lot more richer tones in there. And what's really cool, let me bring it, zoom you in a little bit. So I worked in this gold a little bit more than I did with before. So it's not like such a strong streak it, you're getting a lot more blends of the other colors going in there like in like so but this is what's really cool is you see how this is area here is already starting to dry and you're getting that iridescent type of a look to it but still seeing the wood through it and that's what the flash will do is give that a little bit of a, a shimmer iridescent quality to it so this is going to be interesting when it dries All right, so I'm thinking maybe some whites and bronzes. Um, 
for the dragon on top. Maybe bronze and gold, both. And the gold's kind of the highlights. Oh, I'll have to see. All right. Put this guy away so it can dry. Later. All right. In the true sense of what I used in the background, um, I'm going to still use the color shifts. But I believe this is a silver, this is a white shift, and this is the black one. Let me zoom you in a little bit. So you can see little bits of almost like a golden bronze color in there. And the silver one has a little bit of a purple. Now that one's got a couple different colors in it, but it's very, very fine stuff in there. So what I also decided to do is, okay, a lot of times normally when you paint with stencils, you want to put like a light adhesive on the back. So I hope I'm not going to regret this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this up at the top to create some kind of hinge and possibly tape it over here just so that it doesn't move. And then I'm going to use my hands to very carefully make contact because of this having a lip and it goes up where Ray at several different points here. So I'm going to have to really put, put pressure on it to get it to lay flat. So, yeah. And what I'm also going to use is a very large brush. And occasionally, probably going to have multiple colors on my brush most of the time. But I'm going to load it up with a lighter color. Uh, maybe the... Um, the neutral color, the the uh, silver flash, which is right in between, and then occasionally pick up the white or the dark area, and depending on how I apply my brush will depend on, you know, what color is going down, and also eventually you're going to start getting a blending of these colors too, so I may have to load up the white or may have to load up the dark, but it it won't be like a stark white area. You're going to have blended areas. Anyway, you'll see as I go along. All right, put this camera up. Okay. So I'm gonna use a, a painter's tape, which has got a low tack adhesive on it. First off, it doesn't hurt the wood. And second thing, it won't hurt the painting I just did on the bottom. So, win-win, I think, hopefully. I'm going to go ahead and kind of curl it up underneath a little bit just to give it some, I guess, more of a, a, an edge to grab it, and it won't move. And see how that much is really going up high. That's why I'm going to need my hands to really push that down. And then this is just to keep it from moving position um, and pivoting from like the left to the right. Let me get a little bit more surface area. I don't want to shift this way. So if I go back and I'm, I'm painting this area and I decide to bring in say like a, a dark purple or something like that, the, the stencil doesn't move. And it stays in place so that's why that's there all right let's see how this works out <laughs> now I'm loading up the silver on the brush right now and it may be one of those things where I go ahead and put down some color just to build it up because these seem to be a little bit on the transparent side and I might need to build it up just so it stands out. But going up and down is gonna give me the sharper lines of the stencil too. And my brush, you see it's not super loaded down with paint. It's only a little bit. That also helps with the um, on and on. Let's 
So I'll make sure I didn't transfer that wet paint. Um, not having the brush super loaded helps with uh, keeping that edge nice and clean too. Now I haven't done a whole lot of what you would consider stencil painting, but I have used templates or created masked areas, um, you know, my own designs and such. So it's the same kind of principle, whether it's a, you know, a store-bought store -bought stencil or you're uh, using Frisket and creating your own stencils. Uh, if you're doing this without adhesive on the back, You definitely take a little bit different type of care with it. So at the time I'm doing the recording, we are a few days away from Christmas. And yeah, I'm doing up a, several videos to load up on my... Um, on my channel because got a lot of things going on with the family and again like I did with Thanksgiving I got a lot of cooking I gotta do uh, especially for mom and dad and and everybody so I want to make sure that I have that family time and not always out in the studio I mean, granted, they're used to me you get being out in the studio. <laughs> they, they also like gaming during those times, too. <laughs> We're turning into a bit of a gaming family. Now all we got to do is get the hubby on board. Kids are trying. But he is resistant. We'll get him eventually. All right, I might, yeah, I think I might go uh, from this point on and just kind of time lapse this because this is going to be a slow process and that way you can see how it develops. It's all about humanity. Okay, so yeah, you guys saw me peeking, and <laughs> yeah, it kind of went me underneath uh, a bit, and so I decided to go ahead and proceed, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some touch up with some paint pens and things like that to give it some definition. So this is going to be like a loose coloring in the background. So I just want to prepare yourself because it's a little bit of a hot mess underneath. See what I mean? Yeek. All right, let me get this tape off and uh, get this stencil off so this thing can dry and I can fix it somehow, hopefully. Yeah, sometimes that happens. And it was a risk, me doing this without it um, being adhered down. Um, but sometimes... You know, it's worth it to do a risk, you know, and, and then you realize either, yeah, silly, <laughs> that's why you do that, or wait a minute, this, you know, has the potential for, I don't know. Anyway. Most of the time, there's something you can do to fix it and make it work. So, for right now. That's what we have, and it looks a little bit like a hot mess. So as they say, this is the ugly side of art. And see what I can do with this. But for right now, I'm gonna see if I can clean this up first. Um, and if it doesn't come up, then I will probably paint this rim uh, a solid color or something like that. All right. 